Hello, hello, hello. I brought the videos back for you since I heard quite a few people did not like the last video I posted. So, here I am. I'm, I'm back. Welcome to week two. This is really dealing with your urinalysis and your blood collection for capillary punctures only right now. I know some of you are super excited about getting to blood draws and doing them, um, and we will get there, I promise, but stick with me. So first thing that I want to do is kind of break down the chapters for you, and it's just chapters three and chapter four. It's not chapter six yet. We're not we're not quite there yet. So chapter three, we're going to start there. It starts with uh, talking about your urinalysis system. The first thing that you really need to understand is what your urinary system does and and what its functions are. So it removes unwanted waste from your body. It's um. Oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it stabilizes your blood volume, your acidity level, and your electrolytes. It regulates your extracellular fluids and your and the absorption of your calcium by activating vitamin D. It also um, secretes a hormone that uh, controls your red blood cells. Those are some big functions that it does for you, so make sure that you understand that moving forward because you may see that on a test or quiz. Hint, hint. So now that we understand what your urinary system does, we need to understand the, the functions and the makeup of it. You need to understand what it looks like in there. So the first part of your urinary system is your kidneys, okay? These are bean-shaped objects that are on both sides, right and left, and they are about four to five inches long, okay? If you take your hands and you put them onto your back, like if you were going to be yelling at your husband, where you place your hands, that's generally where your kidneys are. Okay. The functional unit of a kidney is called a nephron. That functioning unit makes your kidney work, does its job for you. Okay. That's where urine really starts to get made in the kidneys. Then from your kidneys come your ureters. Okay. Their job is to carry urine from your kidney to your bladder. Okay. They're about 10 to 12 inches in length and they're tube shaped. Makes sense, they're carrying something. From your ureters, obviously you go to your bladder which really its whole job is just to hold the urine until it's ready to be expelled from the body. Plain and simple, okay? Bladder, out of the bladder is your urethra, okay? For men and women, they are different sizes. Women's are an inch and a half long, men's are eight inches long. So make sure that you understand that when you're dealing with patients, women's are shorter than men's. Um, and their job is to really expel the urine. And that opening where the urine comes out is called a ure urethra meatus, okay? You might want to start understanding the parts of your system if you're going to be in the field. So that's a quick breakdown for you of what it, the system looks like, okay? Now that we know kind of how our system works and, you know, how it breaks down and how urine gets made, we need to know how to collect it before we can run it. You can't collect, you can't run something you don't have. So there are three I'm sorry, no, there are four basic types of um, specimen collection. First one is a random specimen. That's pretty much what you're going to have when you go into the office. You're going to go in, you're going to complain of some problems, the doctor's going to say, I want a sample from you. Okay? You want to catch that midstream part of the urine, so the middle part of the urine, and you want to make sure that you explain to patients how to collect that. Okay? You also need to know what a um, first morning specimen is. That's really the best specimen to get because it's the most concentrated. It is sat in your bladder for overnight, generally eight hours or longer, and has the most concentrated substances in it for you. So it's going to have all the good bacteria that we need to know about if someone's not feeling well. Then you have a clean catch urine. Okay, that's exactly the same as a, 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 a random specimen, except for the fact that we're going to give the patient three antiseptic towels, and we're going to have them cleanse themselves prior to giving the sample. So please make sure that you know the difference because that will be a procedure this week. You will have to instruct me as your patient how to give a clean catch urine sample. And the final sample is a time sample. So what that means is sometimes we have set times that we want to collect someone's urine, whether that be at the beginning, two hours later, four hours later, six hours later or for a time period, 24 hours or 12 hours. So know the difference between all the specimen collections. Okay. Now we know how to collect it. Now we want to play with it. We want to run it. 
we want to do a urinalysis on it. Now, urinalysis is actually based off of two parts, the physical and the chemical. The physical urinalysis is really composed of what color is your urine? Does it have an odor? Is it transparent? Can I see through it? What is its appearance? Is it cloudy or milky? Um, is it opaque? You're going to want to know what those physical parts are because that's going to kind of help you down the road with the patient. Okay. Chemical is really where you use a reagent test strip. And what that is is it's a thin, flexible pad strip that's going to have nine different pads on it. Each pad is built in, has a built-in chemical part that you'll be testing your urine on. And what we're really looking for in that is we test the specific gravity, the pH, the um, glucose, ketones, bilirubin, urobilirubin, blood, protein, and nitrate. Make sure that when you're reading your chapter, you know what each of those components are and what they're made up of. Which ones are supposed to be there, which ones aren't supposed to be there. So make sure you take a look at that in your chapter as well. Okay. I, again, I'm going to tell you, you need to be prepared to tell me how to do a urinalysis sample because that's actually one of your procedures for this week. Now let's move on to the capillary puncture, which everyone is so thrilled about. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing a lot of very excited people for this part. So this is really pretty much the other name for it is a skin puncture. And you want to make sure that when you're doing a skin puncture, you're doing it because you don't need a whole lot of blood, okay? Or you've got a patient who's got real small veins, or um, they've got burns or skin irritations on their arm. Somebody who's probably been through a lot, cancer patients, geriatric patients, um, children are very bad about sitting and letting you stick a needle in their arms, so sticking their fingers quick and you can get it over with. And obese patients are also somebody that you're going to use this on because it's very hard to find their veins because they're deeper set in their body and they're covered by many layers of fat and it's very hard to get to the vein. Um, so make sure that when you're doing your capillary punctures, it's because you, are, you do need just a small amount of blood. You don't need the large amounts of blood. And when you're doing this, again, you saw me do this on Thursday. It's fairly simple. But you want to make sure that you have all of the necessary parts to it. So you want to have that retractable, non-reusable um, lancet, your gauze pad, your alcohol pad, your gloves. You want to make sure that you have your glucometer with the test strips. And you also want to make sure you have a bandage for the patient. If they need it, some patients will refuse it, okay? First drop of blood always wiped away. That's because it contains that tissue fluid that can dilute your sample and give you a false result, false result, which you don't want. Um, second thing that I always tell people with capillary punctures, remember, it's just these two fingers, middle and ring. Okay, they're the only ones that need some love from you, nobody else. And you want to use the lateral part of your finger, so the outside edges are the best parts because they're the fleshiest and they're the most vascular. You also want to go perpendicular to the rolls of the finger, not parallel. Parallel will cause the blood to just drip down your finger as opposed to pooling and giving you big drops of blood. That's what you want when you're collecting a sample from a patient, that big pool of blood. So you're not going to chase the blood down someone's finger. When you're doing a capillary puncture, the recommended depth for adults is 2 to 3 millimeters, and for children it's no less or no more than 2 millimeters. Doing any more than that can actually puncture a bone, causing osteomyelitis, which is an inflammation of the bone, which could end up making the patient lose um, a limb or, or parts of their body that they don't need to be losing. Okay? Um, for infants and children who are not walking yet, we can use a heel, but the same thing, that outer edge, that lateral edge of the heel as well. Okay. All right, guys. We are almost all done for week two. I just want to give you a couple little reminders. Your diversity project is going to be due on Sunday, that scenario that we talked about. Also, this week, your discussion post is going to be due on Friday by 5 p.m. because you really can't do it until after you complete the lab on Thursday. So make sure that when you're getting into it this week that you make sure you've got to wait until Friday to do that. 
Um, and last piece is we will have a guest speaker this week that's going to be Jessica Colt, and she's going to come in and talk to you about resume writing and using Optimal Resume. This is going to be very important because this is your third project for the semester. Okay, so if you have any questions about resumes or want to bring in your resume and talk with Jessica about it, please do so. That's perfectly fine. She's going to get the first hour and a half of class with you guys to kind of go over resume writing and preparing you guys for externship with resumes. You do not have to print off any of your procedure sheets this week. I will have them all for you. And I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday, happy, healthy, ready to go. And uh, make sure you come with full bladders. Bye, guys.